Well, Hegel, Hegel cut quite a figure in his own day. Um, when at the height of his career, he was really a European phenomenon. He was a famous person. People were asking him to endorse products even. A snuff manufacturer wanted to know if he could put Hegel's picture on a box of snuff at one point here. Uh, people, hundreds of people came to hear him lecture and so on. He himself was, was born in 1770, which is a, a bumper year for world historical individuals. Hegel was born then. Friedrich Hölderlin, the poet, was born then. Wordsworth was born then. Napoleon Bonaparte was born in 1769, almost in August, almost one year older than Hegel, but close enough to be thrown in that same kind of cohort here. And one of the things that really stood out for this particular generation was the French Revolution in 1789. Uh, until that point, Europe Europe knew that it was changing. There was lots of grumbling in the air about how market relations were starting to erode old traditions and so on, and how this new world, uh, the scientific revolution now in its background, was really changing everything up, making everything unstable. But it still tended to talk of itself as if it were still part of the old feudal order of things. Here. In 1789, all of that changed, and Hegel, who was a great proponent and an enthusiast of the revolution, realized that this changed everything, and that he wanted to be a thinker of this new modern world, be a thinker of modernity. He wanted to try and figure out what it meant for us that we were going through this kind of change. And he thought everything was going to change. Family life was going to change. The workplace was going to change. The nature of the state, uh, law, uh, so on and so on and so on. Science was going to you know, continue to you know, uproot our understanding of nature. Our attitude about traditional logic and metaphysics had already been you know, revolutionized by Kant here. And that it was what we needed again was to kind of put this all together. Now, Hegel, Hegel wasn't actually very successful at this. He couldn't at first figure out what he wanted to be, whether he wanted to be a public intellectual or a journalist or uh, but he eventually decided he wanted around 1800 that he wanted to enter university life. But he ended up not getting a position at a university until 1817. Until then he had to work as a newspaper editor and a high school teacher and a number of other different kinds of things here. He um, quickly established this kind of celebrity for himself. And he realized that he was living in now just a tumultuous time. There was, he was living in the backwash of the scientific revolution from the 17th century. He was living in the time of the French Revolution and then all the chaos that followed the French Revolution and then the Napoleonic Wars and then the attempt at the 1815 after the Congress of Vienna to turn the clock back and just reestablish the old order, which turned out to be an impossible dream. The kind of repressive politics that set in in the 1820s. And of course, for the 18, early 1800s on, it was becoming clear that Europe and soon the whole world was going to be experiencing all the great shocks of the Industrial Revolution here. So this was the political revolution, the scientific revolution, the Industrial Revolution were all playing these huge roles uh, for Hegel and he was trying to put all this together. As a person he was, you know, he, people were pretty united on it. They, uh, he was considered extremely sociable, very amiable, he was also considered a bit wooden and a bit stiff. He was sometimes a little too quick to take offense when some he thought people weren't taking him seriously enough, and so on. Uh, but also he attracted a great number of admirers and so on around him who gathered up just all their reminiscences and everything of him after his rather sudden death in 1831 here. Uh, it's, it was said that Hegel was really the, the last person who knew everything. Um, not quite true, of course, but he did have a grasp of all the realms of philosophy and history and science and mathematics and logic and so on that few of us can really lay claim to today. And he remains, as, as I said, he remains now still a figure on the table, right? still there, still one of the people that we are contending with.